Dave, and welcome to the Gamer's Den. And this will be turn five of our Mice and Mystics series, in which we're trying to get out of these dangerous sewers, and these pesky rat warriors are now officially gone. Okay, so we're able to finally get rid of those rat warriors that were really starting to give us some trouble in those sewers. And now we're just at this point where we're trying to get into the next tile and hopefully get some new equipment while we're there. Now, I didn't get a lot of comments so far, and I'm really hoping to get a lot more comments from you guys just to give me suggestions on how to win the game. Because for me, I know what I want to get done through it, but there are so many ways that you can play this game. And I really want to learn from you guys and how you guys want to try to help them escape the castle. So I wanted to give another shout out to Jim Medlock. Jim Medlock has been there for the past few videos with us. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your guys' suggestions in the future. And Jim actually left one for all three mics. So he left one for Colin, Tilda, and Magnos. And what he suggests that we do with those three characters is search with every single one of them. So hopefully we'll be able to do something with them. But before I actually go on to the board, I'm just going to go over our rule. The rule is, is when you're on a new tile... You can only successfully search on that tile once. I guess this is set up so that you don't find too many things and just stay on one tile as long as you can just to build up your arsenal of items and weapon and armor and things and just to continue on playing the game and enjoying the adventure. So with that being said is that Colin has already successfully searched on this tile and found that fish hook and thread. But all the other three mice haven't successfully searched on this tile yet. But for Colin, he won't be able to successfully search. So let's go to the table and see what Colin's going to do. So what we're going to have to do is, of course, roll for movement first. And Colin gets a three. Okay, so Colin gets a three plus two of his normal movement. Can actually move up to five spaces. What I'm going to do is just try to get him to a space. Maybe we'll just move him over here to Magnus' space. So since Colin already got the fish hook and thread for us in the water space on this tile, he won't be able to really search. But for right now, Colin is actually going to have to just wait it out and kind of just hang out there for the time being. Now what I'm going to do, and I hope Jim doesn't get angry by this, but I'm going to actually do a little move of my own. And I'm actually going to do a free action with Colin since it seems that he can't really do anything else. What I will do though is I will give one cheese, use a free action to give one cheese to Tilda. Just so that she can be prepared to use her major heal ability if she feels like she needs to in the game. So at least that, you know, in that sense she's ready to be able to use that ability. And I think at this point I think I'm just going to end Colin's turn. I hope you don't mind Jim by taking some liberties with his turn. I would have used give order to give Tilda or Maga those two chances to successfully search. So I would have done something along those lines, but that's fine. Um, I hope you don't mind me taking the liberty of giving one cheese to Tilda just so that she's prepared just in case we don't have a really good encounter on, on the next tile. So that's just something to think about, or if we get hit with a surge on this tile. So that's just something to think about in regards to Colin's turn. But I think what he did was pretty good. He, he was able to move over next to Magnus. He was able to give a cheese to Tilda. And he's kind of just hanging out there for right now until hopefully Nez can get out of the water and be able to move them into the next tile. So let's go on to Tilda's turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll for movement for Tilda. And she gets a 2. So 2 plus 2 movement value that she has on her card equals 4. She can, so she can move up to 4 spaces. I'm going to say Tilda is just going to move right there into that space with Colin and Magnus. I think at this point they're all waiting by the door and just waiting for hopefully Nez to get in there. So now I think Tilda's going to search. So Tilda's going to search in that space with Colin and Magnus. And she's going to hopefully find something. 
And she doesn't, so Tilda does not find anything in that space. So they aren't able to get anything as of yet. But we're gonna remain hopeful and hope that eventually Magnus or someone else can be able to get something on this turn. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of take that away and we're gonna end Tilda's turn. So, Tilda, I think Tilda's not gonna be the mouse to find things. Um, she has not successfully searched at least twice. So it's not looking good for Tilda either, but let's just say they're on this adventure. They're trying to rush into this next tile. They're, they're waiting for Nez to get out of the water. It's like, come on, man, let's go. And Tilda's just maybe rushed and she can't even be able to find anything on her space. But luckily she's able to move over next to Colin and Maganels and be able to be on the same space as them, just waiting for that moment when they can actually explore into the next tile. So let's go on to Maganos' turn. So Maganos rolls one for movement. So he gets one plus two of his movement value to give him three. So now he can move up to three spaces. At this point, I think Maganos would be best by just sitting there with Colin and Tilda. I think he's just gonna be kind of hanging out right there. But I think he's gonna try searching. And let's see. Aha! So Maganos, yet again, an awesome searcher. Even in his old age, he can find these things. And we are going to pick up, ooh, the shifting cloak. And I'll show it to you guys up on the screen. And it says shifting cloak, plus one to your defense value. So that means one more defense die. And this is immediately after blocking all hits from an attack by a minion. The wearer of this cloak may be placed on any normal space on the same tile. And it requires a mystic or scamp in order to use. And it's an armor card. So since Magados doesn't even have armor on right now, he just has his cloak and his, and his belt, what we can do is for free action, we can actually equip that shifting cloak. So Magados was successful in searching, and we're gonna end his turn. Wow, it's very interesting. Magno seems to be like an amazing, amazing person in this game. He's taken down rat warriors, he's finding items that we need, but what's nice is he's able to find something that he actually needs. He needs defense. So he's able to get something to boost up his defense, as well as if he blocks all those hits, he can move to any other space in the tile, which is perfect for his character because he loves being away from the action, right? You don't want to be getting attacked by the minions. Block all the hits from one, you can move to any space that you want to. So let's just hope that he can get some things done and be able to move along within our journey. And now we're going to move on to Nez's turn and see what he's going to do. So we are gonna roll for Nez's movement. And Nez rolls a one. And plus one for his movement value gives him two. So luckily we're able to get Nez to where we need him to be. And what I'm gonna do with Nez is get him finally out of this water space, move one and move two. So one thing I did forget to do that I want to do I'm gonna do it right now. And you guys are probably wondering, why haven't you done this yet? It's coming. I'm actually gonna do a free action as well. So I'm gonna say before I explored into the next tile, I did a free action to equip the Thimble Helm. So I'm gonna equip the Thimble Helm onto Nez. And so he's gonna have that one additional defense on him, as well as the ability to discard treachery cards if we ever get them in the search deck, right? So if we get that, oh, you're abducted, not Thimble Helm, uh, you know, just discard it. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be able to really help us in the game, and I'm really happy that we finally get to put it on to Nez. I think our best bet is to get our mice into the next tile. So with that being said, we are actually going to explore out of the sewers. So when we explore out of the sewers, what we're gonna have to instantly do is take the fish hook and thread card and shuffle it back into the search deck and take the fish hook and thread token and kind of put it away where you keep your tokens for the game. But one thing you guys are probably wondering is why did you leave that fish hook and thread token there? Why did you do that? I think for me the strategy right now is to 
keep the page numbers where they are as long as we can. For those that are experienced Mice and Mystics players, to move on to two tiles and not even have a surge yet is a very great feat to, to be able to accomplish. And I, in trying to keep that in mind as well when we're going on our adventure, so before we even get into looking at the tile, first what we're going to have to do is read a story moment. Nez held his chin and observed the gloomy tunnels the mice had entered. I would guess these tunnels are mouse made, he mused. Dug out who knows how many centuries ago. Suddenly a familiar cry echoed down the tunnels from far away. That's Miss Maggie's voice cried Colin. We must be near the kitchens, observed Tilda. The dear woman sounds distressed. Let us find her with all haste. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the mice, place them on either one of these spaces that are adjacent to the entranceway. You can either put them on the minion entrance space or you can put them on a normal tile space. I'm just going to put them on the minion entry space for right now just because I'm not looking really forward to meeting any other minions. Now the thing is that there is an optional side plot to this tile. It applies to the flip space which is right over here and I'll show it to you on the graphic. Save Miss Maggie. After clearing the kitchen tunnels and minions, the mice may choose to use the flip location on that tile to travel up into the kitchen, where they can attempt to warn Miss Maggie of Vanestra's treachery. Or the mice may avoid this danger for now, choosing instead to move along to the tunnel entrance tile. Note, helping Miss Maggie will get players the Miss Maggie Ally Story Achievement, which could help in later chapters. And the nice thing about this tile is that that's it. Those are the only specific rules that are here. So just like before, because there's no special setup for this tile, what we're gonna do is actually draw an encounter card. For this encounter, we get two rats and three roaches. I like to spread out the two rats, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two roaches with this rat over here to the right, and I'm going to put one with that rat all the way on the far end of this space. But also, this encounter is a mouse traps encounter. And what does that mean? Well, we have one red X on this tile. We're gonna have to add a mouse trap token onto there. And what that basically means is that we have to roll to try to get over the mouse trap if we're smart enough to get through it. Or if we get hit on it, we're gonna be gaining a wound. So that's just another obstacle that we're gonna have to try to face. Luckily for us, I don't think we are forced to go through this obstacle, which is really good. The only problem is that the difficulty on this encounter card itself is pretty high, I think. So it's just something that we have to be concerned about. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shuffle our initiative cards into our initiative track. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see an enemy we haven't seen yet before in this series, which, is, which are the roaches. Now I'll explain what the roaches do in just a minute. So let's do our initiative track. Our first person on the initiative track will be Maganos. All right, Maganos. The second one will be Colin. Nice. Third one will be the Roaches. The fourth one will be the Rat Warriors. The fifth one will be Nez. And then the sixth one will be Tilda. So let's look at this Roaches card before we even get started. So I'm going to show it to you guys on the board. So Roaches have two battle value and one defense value. And they have an ability called Steal. And when a roach wounds a mouse, instead of placing wound markers, remove one cheese from that mouse's stash for each wound inflicted. If that mouse has no cheese, place wound markers as usual. So what that means is that if we do have cheese and every single mouse in our party has at least one cheese, instead of gaining the wound, 
that cheese would be gone. In some circumstances, that's pretty good. In others, not so good. So that's what our initiative track is looking like right now for our next turn. Right now we have our adventurers, we're in the kitchen tunnels. If you guys think that we should start on the other space, the one next to the minion entrance space, and move a few of those rats and roaches around, I'm more than happy to do that, just so that you guys can set up the board the way that you want to tackle it. I'm going to leave it to you guys based on what you want to be able to accomplish here. I really hope that I can get some more comments from you guys. I really strongly suggest that if you guys are interested in continuing on with this series, you're more than welcome to leave a comment. Leave, you know, Even give me advice on how to better do the show. If you guys feel like, hey, you know what? Maybe that animation really wasn't really cool. Or hey, you know what? It would be great if you had this camera angle instead of another one. I'm more than willing to kind of tweak the show a little bit based on your suggestions and hopefully make it into a show that you guys enjoy and are entertained by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to show you guys like I do at the end of every episode, which is show you where we're at so far in the game. And I'm hoping that maybe we'll be able to survive on this next tile in the kitchen tunnels. But with that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.